if you take away nothing else from this, take away this. The church's history is more than just the founding of any single denomination. The church was founded on the day of Pentecost, and the church has a history. She has a heritage and she has a tradition. What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, we're talking about Ember Days. Stick around. You might be asking yourself the same question I asked myself. What the heck is an Ember Day? Well, Ember Days are a very ancient tradition of the Christian church that happen four times a year. And we know this from, well, Christianity being one of the most well-documented religions of all time. And so we know that as early as 200 AD, the church was not only celebrating the season of Advent, but in the season of Advent were three days known as Ember Days. And these come to us from the Latin quartar temporum, or quarter time. So four times a year, there's four sets of three Ember Days every year. And as we're in the season of Advent now, and the Ember Days are coming, the Wednesday, the Friday, and the Saturday after St. Lucia Day on December 13th, I thought it might be an opportunity for us to talk about these Ember Days. Now, Ember comes to us from a weird, and I'm going to use the word um, according to its dictionary definition, so please don't assume I'm cursing, but it comes to us as a weird kind of bastardization of the temporum part. Um, you know, we drop the T, it, it ca crosses over into English, and now we have Ember. But Quator Temporum, or the, 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 the four times, so one for each season. There's Ember Days in spring, summer, fall, and winter. And we are on the winter uh, Ember Days. But I suppose we should say there are the four seasons, uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall, because for the Christian, the new year begins on the first Sunday of Advent. It is a brand new church year. So this is also a tradition that comes to us from the very ancient church. Now, there are three sets of days set aside, and these are... Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And they're in each season. So the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday following the first Sunday in Lent. There's a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday in the season of Pentecost. There's a Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after Holy Cross Day, which is September, get it, Ember? September 14th. You can already kind of see it in the calendar. And then, of course, St. Lucia's Day on December 13th. Now, what are the Ember Days? These are days that are devoted to fasting and to prayer, and to repentance. So traditionally speaking, during an ember day, you would only eat one meal for that day, no later than midday, and maybe a quarter of a meal in the evening. You would also abstain from meat and wine. So meat and drink. And it's interesting, I know maybe a lot of, a lot of my Protestant viewers are going to say, this is too Roman Catholic, even for me. What are you as a Lutheran doing talking about the Ember Days? Well, I would make a, a polite and courteous reminder to you that our Lord Jesus Christ does not say to us, if you fast. Jesus says to us, when you fast. And part of our heritage, you as Protestants, me as Lutherans, starting both of us at the Reformation, uh, the first of the 95 theses that Luther posted is a very biblical statement. When our Lord Jesus Christ uh, said repent, he willed that the entire life of the Christian be a life of repentance. So repentance, sorrow, sincere heartfelt sorrow for sin, turning from sin to God and falling on your knees before a holy and mighty God and saying, I, a poor miserable sinner. And then... Unlike in the Roman Catholic Church, we have the absolute absolution of Christ coming to us from the cross in the Lutheran Church through the words of our pastor who says, I forgive you as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And a pastor can do that because Jesus gave that authority to pastors in John chapter 20 when he breathed on his disciples gave them the Holy Spirit, and said, whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And we recall when Jesus sent out 72, just those, to, to just them, he said, if they hear it from you, they've heard it from me. So confession, 
absolution would be an amazing thing to do during an ember day. You're repenting of your sins. You're fasting from meat and from drink. And you're not, you know, it's not a complete fast. It could be, I suppose, if you wanted it to. But it's just, you know, one meal a day around midday and a little bit of a snack later. No meat, no wine. So that's what the ember days are. They are focused on repentance. They are focused on prayer. They are focused on fasting and almsgiving, giving of your first fruits to those in need, be it an, off, an extra offering at church or a donation to a local food pantry, however you choose to give. There's, there's no 10% law for us as Christians. There is a tithe, but the, the biggest thing to remember about a tithe is that God just loves a cheerful giver. So decide in your heart what you're going to do and do that. Um, there's, uh, I'm checking my notes here uh, because there's a lot to, to, that I want to cover with these Ember Days. So I finally learned, so I don't go on a rant, to have notes up in front of me. Now, uh, your almsgiving, first fruits. This is because the four Ember seasons, the four Ember times, are tied to the harvest of each season. And the, the early church recognized Jesus' phrase, uh, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but the giving of alms, your first fruits, celebrating the harvest, the, the fruits of the earth that God has provided, that God has indeed given us this day our daily bread. And during these times of harvest, during these ember days, we, uh, it, we give thanksgiving to God for the fruits of the earth, but in repentance, we also abstain from some of the fruits of the earth uh, as Jesus instructs us to fast. That's a part of the Christian life. And so we give of alms of our first fruits to the Lord, to the Lord in either a direct contribution to the church or um, as, as maybe with fasting with Lent, the money that you're saving by not eating, you then turn around and donate to charity or something like that entirely up to you. Now, at the time of the Reformation, the focus was on catechesis, instruction into the Christian faith. So the four seasons of Embertide, I guess if we can call it that, really should be focused on catechizing yourself. Go through Luther's small catechism. Understand the basics of your Christian faith. And at the Reformation, this was done during the Ember seasons by preaching the catechism four times a year. Now, also, additionally, in the medieval church, given Jesus' words that we're going to go back to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, during the ember seasons, this is when pastors and priests were ordained into the office of the holy ministry. And it's a good practice that during these times, during these seasons of harvest, that we should ordain men into the pastoral office because, as Jesus does indeed say, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So in our prayer and in our fasting during these ember days, we should pray that God would send laborers into the harvest. And now there are some readings associated with this, and I'm going to see if I can get to them. Oh, I screwed this up. Look at that. Oh, there's only three. That's right. Um, so the readings for Wednesday uh, in this Advent ember tide come to us from Matthew 12, 38 through 50 and 1 Kings 19, 3 through 8. Read those scriptures on Wednesday. On Friday of ember days, we read from John chapter 5, verses 1 through 15 and Ezekiel 18, 20 through 28. And on Saturday in the ember days, we read from Matthew 17, 1 through 9 and Thessalonians 5, 14 through 23. And that's really it. That's the Ember Days. Emphasis on God's word, thanksgiving for the harvest, abstaining from the harvest, give, devoting ourselves to uh, fasting and prayer, and, um, and giving to the poor, and catechizing ourselves, and being immersed in God's word. Now, you might say that this is just a vain tradition of men because, you know, the Roman Catholics do it, so if the Roman Catholics do it, it must be a vain tradition of men. Look at these traditions as as things that you know we don't have to do. We should look at these traditions, weigh them against God's word, and determine whether or not they are good and beneficial. Jesus says praying is good. Jesus says fasting is good. Jesus says giving is good. Loving and serving your neighbor is good. And Jesus says being in God's word is good. Those who love me keep my words, Jesus says. 
So while this is indeed a tradition of men, it is a tradition of men that points us back to Christ. And we have to remember, as far as traditions of men go, just because something's not commanded in the Bible does not therefore necessitate that it is forbidden. There's freedom in Christianity to participate in feasts and holy days as we see fit and as our consciences decide. And Paul would encourage us not to judge each other on feasts and festivals and observances of holy days. So am I going to keep the ember days? <laughs> That's none of your business. <laughs> Whether or not I am or I am not. But I would encourage you to give yourself over to prayer and fasting to studying God's word, to catechize yourself in the Christian faith, and as you are able, in thanksgiving for the fruits of the earth, give back to God that which is already his, and give it back in a way that loves and serves your neighbor. These are the Ember Days, the Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after St. Lucia Day on December 13th. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy one for you, by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.